from King and Bay, this is Sippy TV everywhere. Tonight, jury's still out. Tonight, George packs his suitcase. Tonight, beautiful south, beautiful music. Here's the latest from the City Pulse News Team. City Pulse, tonight. Good evening, quiet. Your neighborhood tonight should have been at Eglinton and Kingston. Emergency task force everywhere after police got a call from a man threatening to kill his wife. Possibly armed, possible hostages. After two tense hours tying up a small army, suspect gave up. No weapon, no captives, just piles of paperwork as cops charged the 34-year-old guy with uttering a death threat. And seen this man, Kiram Kureishi, missing since March 13th after leaving his Palmerston Boulevard home. Now also a week overdue for medication. 27 years old, 6 feet, 155 pounds, slim build. Wore a gray coat, jeans, and brown shoes. If you've got a lead tonight, call 14 Division 324-1400. But tonight, how about you clearing the air? I think she's okay. But I think that uh, the Police Services Board is an important board in our, in our community. A couple of blocks away, our live eye and Lauren Honickman keeping tabs on the Robert Baltovich trial, which is now in the hands of the jury. Lauren? Well, Mark, it has been a full day of deliberations here at the courthouse for the jury. Still no verdict as jury members try to decide whether or not Robert Baltovich killed Elizabeth Bain. Robert Baltovich is guilty as charged. Mark? Okay, thanks, Lauren. A long-awaited ruling tonight from the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Doctors who suspect their colleagues of sexually abusing patients must report them to the college. Even if a doctor learns of abuse while treating a colleague, he must report it. The policy was recommended by the Sexual Abuse Task Force four months ago. Coming up tomorrow, we'll see if Metro High School teachers follow their union's recommendations and ratify a tentative contract. If the deal gets the thumbs up, their week-old work-to-rule campaign will wind down. fishing flotilla from Newfoundland should reach the edge of the Grand Banks early tomorrow. Its mission to protest foreign overfishing just outside Canada's 200-mile limit. Their cause is catching attention in our capital city. The international community will recognize that we're doing what is needed to protect the stocks, not only for Canadian fishermen, but for the fishermen of the world. Mike Tyson signing up for more trouble in prison tonight, the former heavyweight champ facing a reprimand for giving fellow inmates his autograph. According to corrections officials, prisoners are warned not to give away valuables, including the boxer's signature. Tyson serving six years for raping a, bliss, a Miss Black America contestant last year. And now, his regular appearance from the roof. Here's an early check of the forecast in Harold Hossein. Ah, uh, Mark, it's a beautiful spring evening out here. And you know what? Tomorrow is going to be very similar to today. Let's find out what's happening in sports. Here is Spike. All right, got the goods of the NHL players and the new strike deadline Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Uh, reaction from the big George Bell trade, folks, and baseball and more coming up. It was a busy weekend at movie box offices with a basketball pick scoring big. Go! Mm. 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 You know, Billy, when I was looking at it before, I thought it was a little high myself, man. But after reevaluating, see, I think it was just like... A an optical illusion. Shut up, man. See if it avoids the foul line in weeks to come. Okay, thanks very much, John. And it's true in basketball, they can't. Anyway, Gallagher has sports coming up. <laughs> Fabricland. How do Michelle Lee, Morgan Fairchild, and Michelle Phillips look so fabulous over 40? I have lots of sex. Oprah, tomorrow at 4 on City. Time now for sports, and when we last left our labor dispute, here's John Gallagher. <laughs> That's right. It was indeed D-Day for the players as far as they were concerned. The NHL players in a tizzy. They had a noon deadline today. And at that time would announce what they would do with the owner's latest proposal. Accept it or 86 it. I find it somewhat ironic. I mean, this is the 75th anniversary of the NHL. Players have never gone on strike, but believe me, they're walking this Wednesday afternoon. But why should hockey players be any different than, like, football players and baseball players? They've both gone on strike. The negotiating committee and the team player reps have made the decision to take the owner's final offer back to the entire membership for a vote. They are recommending a rejection of that offer. 
and they are extending the strike deadline until 3 p.m. on Wednesday. Got big doers in baseball today. Jays lose 7-3 to Pittsburgh, but look what former Jay is in the news. Oh, George Bell, Bashers Unite. Bell is on his way across town. The Chicago Cubs have traded him to the Chicago White Sox. The Cubs will get outfielder Sammy Sosa and Ken Patterson. He spent, what, six, seven, eight years. You might call them turbulent years here in Toronto. Widely known as one of the biggest jerks in professional sports. He will now almost guaranteed be a full-time DH. Break my heart. Juan Gonzalez, not bad. Rangers will wrap this one up easily. Jeff Russell strikes out Jack Clark. You're out of there, Rangers. What's on your mind, young man? Uh, I just saw that young catcher there, and uh, we could sure use a young catcher like that. Juan Gonzalez, not bad. I am Harold Jose. Take the sunglasses for the first half of the day tomorrow. Back after the Bell Canada weather shot. The eyes of Toronto. Heard the word of mouth on Bye Bye Birdie? It's dynamite. It's super. It's Tommy Toon. Hours away from April, that makes you think spring. Let's see if the weather's thinking with us. Is Harold? I kind of think it is, Mark. It's going to be kind of spring-like through tomorrow, but it's going to take a little bit of a downturn on Wednesday now. And you may see the odd little sprinkly here and there tonight, but certainly nothing to really worry about. The satellite picture shows us most of the cloud remaining well south of the lower lakes as that system heads off into the Atlantic Ocean. And slightly cooler air, but drier and clearer coming in from the northwest. And in our close-up, you can see that cloud just nudging by southwestern Ontario. A little bit of bad news here in that we might see a few flurries late tomorrow night and into Wednesday. Might feel a little bit on the chilly side. March went out, well, just one degree below normal and about a third of the amount of precipitation that we should get. And tomorrow at 6 o'clock, you'll see the April forecast. Hey, thanks, Harold. Some stories to watch for tomorrow. Ottawa introducing gun control regulations, finally putting some teeth in its legislation sitting on the shelf since December. And Ben Chin tracks heroin addicts searching for a way to kick the habit in part two of our new serial on addiction. And that is this edition of City Pulse tonight. Kevin Frankish has your next update at 2 a.m. from City TV Everywhere. Thanks for joining us. Good night. 30 minutes from now, Barbara Streisand and Chris Christopherson are shooting stars going in opposite directions in the musical remake A Star is Born. It's a City TV premiere right after SCTV Next. <laughs>